SS soldiers moved in position for the first of many bloody missions. If Hitler was to secure his power with the wealthy German elites, he had to rid himself of all liability, including his longtime ally, the SA. They were looking to be his downfall, their street thug antics and leader Ernst Rome's unlikely sexual preference risked losing the support of the elite. So Hitler chose a savage purge, murdering more than 1,000 SA members. But what made him finally snap? First, let's look at Ernst Rome a passionate Nazi since the start of the movement who became one of Hitler's closest associates. Once known as the Machine Gun King for his stockpiling and distribution of illegal weapons. He made his connections through the military, networking enough to create paramilitary groups that would eventually become the Sturmabteilung SA, the Nazis' first paramilitary wing and credited for helping Hitler rise to power in Germany. They were created in 1922 under the pretext of guarding Nazi parties, composed of lower middle class Germans who lost their jobs due to the economic crisis. Hitler planned for them to become the next Nazi army, but they were anti-Semitic, anti-democratic and straight up radical. Ernst Röhm became the SA's supreme commander in 1924. While Hitler was probing for legal methods to seize control of Germany, Röhm advocated for the SA to take power by force, an idea Hitler rejected at first, prompting Röhm to step down. This and other disagreements with Hitler in 1925 led him to resign. Yet after a few year hiatus as an advisor to the Bolivian army, he returned to Germany at Hitler's request in 1930. He was then appointed as the SA's chief of staff, their leader under Hitler. Replacing Franz von Pfeffer, who theorized that this reappointment was because Rome possessed an easy Achilles heel for Hitler to target if ever he grew too strong. What was this secret weakness? Rome was many things, a charismatic leader, meticulously organized and brutally ruthless, a perfect advocate for spreading ideology and fear. Yet, most surprisingly, he was both a gay man and a Nazi. Back then, the German criminal code established paragraph 175, which made life for homosexual men difficult on its own and unthinkable if you worked for the military. It criminalized sexual relations between males and was weaponized by the various political rivalries of the time, as we'll discover later. The Social Democratic Party of Germany, SPD, and the Communist Party of Germany, KPD, the primary political rivals of the Nazis, were among the worst offenders of this tactic. Hypocritically, they pushed to abolish paragraph 175, but took every chance to discredit political opponents with accusations of homosexuality. The Nazis had always been clear about their stance on gay men, saying in 1928 that anyone who even thinks of homosexual love is our enemy. Some of Rome's associates were gay men too, and thus deemed intolerable within the SA. After all, they had a hyper-masculine image to upkeep, so any gay men within had to remain discreet at all costs. Leading a double life as both a gay man and a Nazi was tough, but Hitler's favor made it easier for him, especially since Rome was extremely efficient. In just a couple of years, he grew the SA from 70,000 members to more than 4 million. He divided Germany into 21 military-like districts, created flying squads, and instituted the Nazi Motor Corps. By the time Hitler rose to power in 1933, the SA was an official government organization, often arresting and interrogating ideological and political enemies, and of course, the Jewish people. They even built the first concentration camps. 
But why did Hitler turn a blind eye to Rome, despite the risks of his homosexuality being publicly known and undermining the Nazi party's core beliefs? In essence, Rome was just too useful for Hitler to pass up. Unfortunately for him, the weight of his double life was taking its toll. Rome once sent a letter to another party member, Karl Gunther Heimsdorf, where he described himself as same-sex oriented and mentioned how he had an aversion to women. The Social Democratic Party leveraged these rumors to accuse Rome of hiring male prostitutes through their newspaper, the Münchener Post. The SDP called the Nazis hypocrites for condemning homosexuality in public but ignoring it within their own ranks, and claimed that the German youth were endangered by Rome's homosexuality. What was Hitler doing whilst this unfolded? Hitler was caught up in his own ambition and was appointed by Germany's president Paul von Hindenburg as Chancellor of Germany on January 30th, 1933. This began the process of Gleichschaltung, or coordination, where Hitler and the Nazi party would control everything in German society, from the media to education. And for this to happen, they needed the support of the wealthy elite. The SA became trouble for Hitler's Gleichschaltung plan. Rome's grandiose speeches about making the SA the most powerful force in Germany were unnerving to the conservative elite. Rome expressed socialistic views on the economy and was seen as too much of a revolutionary by industrialists who provided the funds for the Nazis. The SA was feared by the elite and also resented the Reichswehr, the German army. They both hated Rome's ideas of merging the SA with the German army into what he called the People's Army. To further tarnish Rome's image, on June 26th, a Nazi official discovered Rome and a close collaborator, Paul Rohrbein, getting rather close at a German pub. Since the Social Democratic Party of Germany still lacked concrete evidence of Rome's homosexuality to charge him under paragraph 175, a former Nazi, Helmut Klotz, plotted a takedown. He prepared a 17-page pamphlet that contained three letters and had around 300,000 copies of this pamphlet copied and distributed among German politicians, teachers, and army officers, claiming that the fish stinks from its head. Decay reaches deep into the ranks of the Nazi party. Claiming that a party that accepted homosexuality in its higher ranks intended to poison German society. Rome sued to stop the distribution of the letters, but his plan was foiled because he never claimed the letters were fake, and the court ruled that there wasn't illegality in publishing genuine letters. He admitted to some of his Nazi companions that he had, indeed, written the letters. Interestingly enough, the smear campaign targeted Hitler and the Nazis as a whole, instead of Rome, calling them a danger to the German youth. While this really undermined the public's perception of the Nazi party, Hitler defended Rome and was adamant about him remaining as chief of staff of the SA. Rome had even attempted to resign, but Hitler refused his resignation. Historians believe this was because Hitler was fond of Rome, satisfied with his professionality, and in a way indebted to him for his staunch support of his appointment. Regardless, this only helped the Nazi party resent Rome even more. But what did the other Nazi groups think of these accusations? Another organ of the Nazi party, the Schutzstaffel or SS, run by Heinrich Himmler, was resentful of Rome's influence over Hitler. The SS was founded back in 1925 as another paramilitary unit to serve as Hitler's highly trained personal bodyguard, in contrast to the SA, who were originally street thugs. Desiring to distance his elite SS from Rome's SA, Himmler plotted to take Rome down through his network of spies supported by Prussia's head of state, Hermann Göring's Gestapo. It's said that Himmler and other officials were jealous of Rome's connection with Hitler. 
The SA leader often provoked Hitler or challenged him, something they never dared. They convinced Hitler that if he was to obtain the backing of the wealthy elite, Rome had to go. In late June 1934, Hitler prepares for a rebranding of the SA. He calls off their regular military exercises and orders them to go on leave, dispersing them to different parts of the country, becoming, as some might think, an easy target. With a break from duties, Ernst Röhm decides to go on holiday to the lake town of Bad Visi in Bavaria. With the SA spread wide, Himmler and Göring seized their opportunity to prepare evidence incriminating Rome. They rushed a shady document to Hitler stating that Rome made a deal with the French government to overthrow Hitler for 10 million French francs. But much like most Nazi evidence, it was a completely falsified document. What purpose did these rebellious extremists in the SA serve if Hitler was already in power? Under the manipulation of SS officials, an enraged Hitler declared they must purge the SA, leading to one of the most infamous political massacres in history, the Night of the Long Knives. On June 29, 1934, he ordered Himmler's SS and Göring's Gestapo to execute all individuals considered rivals, threats, or non-believers within the Nazi party across the country. The SS used the codeword Colibri, meaning hummingbird, to let the execution squads know when to start the swift arrests and killings. Many of the leaders of the SA were sleeping, unsuspecting of what was about to happen at a lakeside hotel at Bad Visi. A convoy of trucks stealthily approached the hotel and burst the doors, pulling the SA leaders from their beds and taking them to the Nazi headquarters to be gunned down, with around 85 killed on the spot. Hitler went personally to arrest Rome, accompanied by SS officers, finding him in bed with two other men. Rome was thrown in a cell and the two men were shot dead. At first, Hitler pardoned Rome because of his past services to the movement. But after three days of Rome in his cell and the SS and Gestapo torturing and murdering conspirators, on July 2nd of 1934, Himmler and other officials once more persuaded Hitler to order Rome's execution, claiming that the SA had grown powerful enough to remove even Hitler if left unchecked. So Hitler ordered Rome to be handed a pistol with one bullet and given 10 minutes to pass his own sentence. But 10 minutes came and went, and Rome boldly said, you will have to shoot me yourselves. Rome was shot three times in the chest and once in the head. Rome's death was the grim end to the long weekend of violence. Historians estimate that over 1,000 SA members were killed in the purge, with many more being tortured whilst interrogated. Two weeks after the events of the Night of Long Knives, Germany's President Hindenburg dies and Hitler combines the titles of President and Chancellor together, declaring himself the supreme leader of Germany, the Fuhrer. Hungry for more shocking history? You've gotta see this.